Welcome. I am Christy Swartz, a reporter with Energy Wire. You are watching the Atlanta Press Club Louder Milk Young debate series. This is the general election debate for the candidates for the Public Service Commission for District 4. In order to ensure everyone's safety, the candidates and panelists are participating from their homes. The Atlanta Press Club gives a special thank you to Georgia Public Broadcasting for helping organize the online debates. Let's meet the candidates. They are in alphabetical order. Democrat Daniel Blackman is the Senior Vice President for Environmental Affairs and Sustainability with Capital Fortitude Business Advisor. Republican Lauren Baba McDonald has served as Public Service Commissioner for District 4 since 1998. He also served 20 years in the Georgia House of Representatives. In addition, he owns a funeral home. Libertarian Nathan Wilson serves as the president of the Atlanta chapter of America's Future Foundation, the chairman of Atlanta's chapter of Liberty on the Rocks. He's also a regular contributor to the Hayden Collins radio program. We are joined by Archith Trishadri, the Atlanta bureau chief for the Next Star Media Group. Archith will help me question the candidates. Now, let's get started. Candidates will have 60 seconds to answer their questions and 30 seconds to respond to rebuttals. I will hold up a piece of paper letting the candidates know when they have 10 seconds remaining. For the full set of rules, please visit at the Atlanta Press Club website, atlantapressclub.org. To start each debate, each panelist will be asked a question by the panel. Archith, you get the first question to Nathan Wilson. Thank you, Christy. Nathan, what will you do for renters and those with lower income families to keep renewable energy options low, especially now that we are in a pandemic? Uh, well, with the renters, if you're looking at a home, that's a, that's, that'd be infrastructure for like a homeowner, the owner of the house. Uh, but what would I like to see is businesses renting out uh, sections of land or part of the property in order to put on those solar panels and maybe pay those renters or the or the, the people renting out that property uh, some of that money to rent that space so that the they can actually sell that energy to the energy companies so that we can actually expand the amount of renewable energy that we actually have. Okay, thank you. I will now ask a question to Daniel Blackman. Mr. Blackman, on your campaign website, part of your platform states he believes that we can prepare for the future without sacrificing the livelihood of our workers today. You're well aware there are some that don't share your views and consider a transition to clean energy, one that will kill jobs and harm our economy by putting an end to the fossil fuel industry. So what are you doing and what will you do to work with your colleagues if elected and others who have this view so you guys can find common ground when it comes to Georgia's energy policy. Excuse me. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. I'm sorry about that. So That's first okay. of all, I want to thank Nathan and Bubba. But comment is simple. We have to, we didn't get here overnight. You know, this is not a marathon. Uh, it's a marathon and not a sprint. So what I believe is we have to work with the utility companies. I've already spoken to uh, uh, leadership at Georgia Power about, you know, what their plan is over time. They have, they do have a plan. I think it should be a little bit more ambitious. Um, union workers, I've always fought for and supported, but we have to be honest, you know, we're in a position now where we have a situation with a nuclear expansion that has cost us a lot of money. And we need to look at ultimately being able to transition into a clean energy future, but that's gonna take a lot of planning. Uh, as you all know that the Public Service Commission is more of a regulatory body, so I think we need to work with our state legislators to work with the commissioners. If I'm elected and I'm fortunate enough to be in that position, there are four other individuals that I'll have to uh, uh, have conversations with. There's a staff that's there, but personally, we need to make sure that we're transitioning based on the opportunities and not just making a decision overnight. Okay, thank you. Archith, it's your turn to ask a question to Bubba McDonald. Bubba, my question to you is, would you support Georgia Power if they were to charge customers for a push for electric cars, charging stations, 
and expanding that form of technology here in the Pete State? Well, as you know, in the last rate case, there was six hundred million dollars uh, put in six million dollars put in the rate case for the expansion of, of, of recharging stations throughout the state. Uh, it, the the cost of uh, putting those stations in should not be uh, held by the consumers, all the other consumers of, of Georgia Power. Uh, it should be self-sustaining itself in order to uh, accelerate the use of electric cars, which I think is something of the future, but it's not here yet, and it's a very expensive infrastructure to put in. Thank you. And that concludes the first portion of the debate. The candidates will now ask a question to an opponent of his choice. Candidates will have 15 seconds to ask the question, 60 seconds to respond, and 30 seconds for a rebuttal. By random selection, Bubba McDonald, you may ask the first question to one of your opponents. Well, thank you, uh, Daniel. Uh, you and I have known each other for quite a long time. And uh, yes, of course, uh, as, as I evaluate uh, uh, the position of the Democratic Party to the Green New Deal, uh, you know it's going to have a tremendous effect on, on regulatory affairs, it becomes being a regulated type of, of progress, if you want to call it progress. Uh, we can't afford it. America cannot afford it. Uh, our utility rates would go out the, out the top. And uh, I just uh, don't understand uh, how that you could accept that type of program when you talk about planning for the future. Uh, that that doesn't really fit the, the core planning of the integrated resource plans that we have on a 20 year basis involving all disciplines of regulation and generation. Go ahead, Mr. Bubba. Uh, yeah, well, I, I thank you so much for the question, Bubba. We have known each other and with all due respect, I didn't write the Green New Deal. I do support many measures in being very ambitious and, and aggressive towards a clean energy future. But I think we need to be honest. What we've been doing is not working. The, the Green New Deal in its current form, um, can there be some adjustments? Of course. But when you look at the integrated resources plan, even going back to 2013, when we saw what Southern Company was doing, there was no solar at the time until people, and I'll give you credit, until certain individuals worked really hard to change that narrative. So I don't think we have to sacrifice one to get the other. I think we need to make the right decisions and be a little bit more aggressive to put ourselves on the best track because pre-existing conditions due to some of the fossil fuel emissions that we've seen have caused health effects in many of our communities. All right, thank you. Nathan Wilson, it is your turn to ask a question. Uh, Mr. Blackman, uh, a couple of years ago, our state legislature actually passed the uh, rate to which Georgia Power can buy uh, the energy back from people producing their own solar energy. So basically it works out, they buy it from you at six cents uh, per kilowatt hour, and then they can turn around and sell it for 26 cents a kilowatt hour. Uh, the public service commissioner at the time, or commission at the time didn't really do anything to voice an opinion about stopping that. Uh, so what would you do at, if you were in that position, what would you do to maybe prevent that or what would you do now to work with the legislature and other bodies who are actually undermining the public service commissioner's ability to actually regulate these industries? Thank you for your question, Nathan. I think first and foremost, you're absolutely right. Uh, we cannot look at the public service commissioners or if one of us were to be elected in a position that we can only focus on um, on the challenges that we face. We have to have solutions. My solution is to look at more community solar options you, to educate folks, whether it's elected officials or state legislators of the community. I've seen too many people that just don't know what the public service commission does, and we need to change that narrative. So we need to focus on building that out and giving opportunities to income families and communities, but we also need to, to, to be a little bit more aggressive when we're addressing the utility companies when they're not making the right decisions on behalf of the rate payers. Um, and Nathan, you get a chance to get a rebuttal here. Uh, well, when uh, looking at this, co covering it uh, on the radio program, uh, you know, it is, th that seemed like it was the last uh, competitive nature that we've had with the uh, uh, for abilities people to have their own uh, be their own energy producers, and that really took away the incentive, the financial incentive at that time. And it's very disappointing to see the legislature undermine that. I, I agree. I agree with you. Okay, excellent. We had a rebuttal a while ago. 
What's that? I didn't get, I didn't get to rebut, uh, Mr. Daniel. You've got 30 seconds. You've got 30 Not, seconds, Commissioner. Well, Nathan, uh, uh, Nathaniel, I, I want you to know that, uh, Daniel, we, uh, in 2013, you know, Georgia Public did not have a single watt of solar power in that IRP. Uh, Bubba McDonald, along with two other commissioners that I got to go with me, we put in 525 megawatts of solar power. Today, we are diversified. We'll have over two gigawatts of solar power by the end of next year. And the, the, the issue is no upward pressure on our rate payers and no state. It's all been market driven. That's the capitalist form of government. Do I get a rebuttal? Thank you. Um, Do I get a rebuttal that uh, was directed yes, at me? Yes, you do. So yes, I, I'm going to be honest. I mean, but Bubba, I, I think that's very disingenuous of you. I think you did. Uh, you were very vocal, and I will give you credit where credit is due. However, you and I both know there were coalitions that worked just as hard. I'll even give credit to the Tea Party in the state of Georgia. There were a lot of individuals that worked very hard to make sure you all as commissioners had that support, and we made sure that we worked around the state day and night to help with that process. So I wouldn't solely give you all just the, the credit, but I will say you, had, you played a major role. We do appreciate it, but it was a lot of us out here that was working on behalf of ratepayers. The last question, Daniel Blackman, you get the last question in this round. So my question to, to Mr. McDonald is that in one of the April meetings with the Public Service Commission, uh, when we were at the height of the COVID crisis, we saw the moratorium, which credit to many utilities, they were proactive in setting forth the moratorium. But in the discussions and the hearings leading up to the moratorium, you had made a comment that uh, was, and I want to paraphrase, so I do apologize if I'm misquoting you, but you made a comment that said that individuals were given a check of $1,200 and there's no reason that they should be behind on their utility bills. And I think that was not as empathetic as it should be. I do know how you voted, but I would like you to explain um, your position on what you thought individuals that were struggling, that were losing their jobs should have been doing at that time. When the first stimulus package came out, paying mortgages, paying energy bills was one of the main priorities in that, in that legislation, in that stimulus package. It went back to people. Georgia Power has worked with partnership with the Public Service Commission, many programs to help those that, that, that are having a difficult time and paying their utility bills, having a difficult time of keeping up with the, with the mortgages. But we've got programs out there. They are programs where they can delay payments with no penalties whatsoever. And, and as they gain back their income, they can continue to uh, pay those bills back. Remember, there is no free electricity. Somebody's going to pay for it. And you have to understand that Georgia Power only has about over two and a half million consumers in Georgia. Our electric membership and our electric cities have over six million consumers out there, which Georgia Power has no regulatory, the Public Service Commission has no regulatory authority over those, over those uh, units. May, may I have a rebuttal? Yes, you do. So, you know, what I would say to that is the Public Service Commission also voted to allow uh, Georgia Power to recoup their losses. Look, I, I get it. Bubba's absolutely right. You know, someone has to pay for the power. But let's be honest. Georgians have not recovered in the way in which they, they should have. Many are still struggling all over this state. I've traveled around the state to the best of my ability, and I've heard the stories. And people are just not back in a position uh, to be able to, to do that. I will give Georgia Power credit for offering a repayment plan, but I don't think it was the right thing to assume that consumers around this state were back in a position um, to be able to meet those needs without a, a secure economic plan from the government and out of D.C. and in Georgia. All right. Thank you. Time. And that concludes our second round. For those just joining us, this is the debate between candidates for Public Service Commission District 4. We will now go back to the panel to ask questions until we run out of time. I will determine when a rebuttal is appropriate, but candidates may raise their hand if they feel they should get a rebuttal. Archith, you get the first question in this round. Thank you, Christy. My question is to Mr. Blackman. Let me ask you about safety for workers. Reports indicate that about 800 or so workers tested positive during the pandemic during the construction of Plant Vogel. How will you ensure that employees are still safe given that we are still in the middle of a pandemic 
without sacrificing on delay or the quality of construction as we expand nuclear energy in Georgia? Well, first and foremost, Georgia Power and Southern Company has gotten it right as it relates to the safety of their workers. I don't think any of us could have properly planned for COVID and the way in which it hit us and, and the, the ability of it being able to spread so fast. Uh, what I would say is that we need to create more stakeholder opportunities with our unions. Um, I, I have been a big supporter of unions for over the past two decades. I've worked extremely hard to make sure unions are protected, to make sure workers have the rights they need and that they're, that they're protected not only by their employers, but that safety measures are in place. What I would like to see is for union workers and stakeholders within the utility industry to come together and one, have more transparency, give more reports, too. We need to be able to work with Georgia Power and understand exactly what measures they're going to put in place. Bubba knows this more than anyone on the call. The Public Service Commission regulates. Their responsibility is not to do Georgia Power's job. However, we should have input in holding them accountable, and that's exactly what I would do. I would work with them to make sure that they gave updated and annual check-ins and reports so that we understood transparency, but also what we need to do to protect workers. Uh Commissioner, I see your hand. You get time for a rebuttal. I don't want to rebut anything because what uh, Nathan, uh, Daniel is saying is, is adequate. But there's no safer institution on this planet in the state of Georgia than what goes on the plant, plant vote. They are tested every morning when they go in. They're testing stations throughout that footprint of the, of the nuclear plant. Craft labor and, and the unions have worked together with it. And if that was a problem, you would hear it from the unions, but they are very supportive of what's taking place down that plant bowl. He raised his hand. Okay. Daniel, go ahead. I can do this in 10 seconds. Look, the, the, the reality is, while Bubba and I are on the same page, my biggest concern is that, that those, those individuals that were sick caused further delays that are now, and to my knowledge, uh, a burden that may be put on the ratepayers. And when we see what has happened, we need to ensure that going forward, we're not seeing those financial burdens of lost time or lost work impacting ratepayers in Georgia or the lives of the workers that are helping us to, to do the construction that is uh, currently happening. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Um, Bob McDonald, this question's for you. We don't need scientists to point this out. The Western United States is on fire and the Gulf and Atlantic coast continue to be hit by hurricanes and strong storms. Even Georgia, which hurricanes typically skirt, is not immune from severe weather in the summer and winter months. What role do you think state utility regulators play in setting energy policies that can help curb this type of severe weather? And if your answer is none, I'm curious as to why. Well, we, Georgia and the utility that we regulate have made a great job. Remember, the EMCs and municipal electrics are partners with the generation in the state of Georgia. It's not just one, one unit of Georgia power. We are decommissioning coal plants. We have a plan that's going forward with that. We have developed the solar program. We buy wind from Oklahoma and, and New Mexico cheaper than we can produce it ourselves here in Georgia because we do not have the sustaining winds that's necessary for turbines in our state unless they're on the out in the ocean, on the east coast, or in our top of our mountains. And I don't think that's environmentally right for us to do that. So we made great pride. There's the best partner that solar energy has that we have in Georgia is nuclear and it's clean and it's it's cheap and it's it's reliable and that's what's important is the reliability of it wherever it might be all right Daniel I see your hand up so your question to fires on the west coast and to extreme weather is a really serious threat just ask duke energy when the, the past hurricanes threatened their nuclear facility and and it, it threatened challenges we need to look at securing not only the grid but put, but putting things in place so i believe to answer your question more directly i don't believe that there are too many states in in, in the united states that are prepared um, i think the power nominal job with being able to reconnect people when their power is disconnected but we need to make sure that policies are in place so that when storms and hurricanes and tornado weather hits rural Georgia, we respond, but we're also putting policies in place that address the issues and prevent them from happening by making sure the right legislation is in place. As a commissioner, we've got to work with elected officials to make those decisions. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. One second. 
the Public Service Commission has no control over the forestry situation in California. We don't have that situation in Georgia because we have great forest management in our state. Okay, we're moving on. We're gonna have to move on. Archith, this next question is for you. All right, thanks, Christy. Uh, my next question is to Mr. McDonald. How will you empower younger voters and enlighten them about the impacts of climate change, whether it comes to handling that on social media or in classrooms? Well, I think that opportunity that we would have is when invited to be in uh, classrooms or uh, meetings with uh, the younger people, uh, we would expose what the plans are that we have in our integrated resource plans over a 20 year period of time, which are updated every three years. We have to look at as the word science is used so often in, in the climate we're in today. We have to look at the science and we have to modify our position and generation so that it will match a plan for the state of Georgia. We can't help what China's doing, belching out carbon dioxide on a daily basis. We have done a tremendous job in bagging some of our coal plants and scrubbers putting in our coal plants and making the environment very, very clean. All right. Okay, Daniel, you have time for a rebuttal. So I, I, would, I would respond to that. If you go onto any college campus, Georgia Tech, University of Georgia, Kennesaw, mm -hmm. Clark, Morehouse, Spelman, and you say IRP, those kids are going to turn the other direction. The problem is we're not making the energy conversation and energy equity relevant to these communities. So number one, we need to make sure that we listen to understand what we're trying to respond to. We need to work with historically black colleges and technical colleges throughout the state of Georgia. And we need to proactively hold town halls and meetings that bring them into the fold. And then lastly, we need to work with our civic organizations. And I get it, Bubba says, this is not our responsibility. The Public Service Commission can't do this and that. But we're going to have to start getting outside of our comfort zone and going into communities that need to have more of an impact. Okay. We're going to give Nathan time for a rebuttal and then we're moving on to the final round. Thanks. Go ahead, Nathan. Uh, thanks. Uh, I'd like to be included. And uh, I am the next generation. I have been on college campuses for the last 10 years uh, speaking directly to this. My background is in environmental policy from Kennesaw State University. And so I have been outreaching to the next generation, have been answering those questions, and have been offering actual solutions to these individuals who are looking for, you know, what what is the next generation going to do? What what is the next solution to these issues that are going on? All right, thank you. And we need to move on. That is all the time we have for questions. Each candidate will now have 60 seconds for a closing statement. Daniel Blackman, you get the first closing statement. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a position that many people don't know about, but what we have seen with COVID-19 is a direct threat and impact on our communities and on our lives. Our children, many in rural Georgia and in mountainous Georgia and coastal Georgia, are struggling immensely to stay online because they lack access to wireless broadband. Many of our communities and families, like Albany, Georgia, and the Doherty County and so many other areas are struggling to keep their, their lights on because the economics have been irreparably damaged. We have to make better decisions, not just on the rhetoric of saying we want to lower bills or expand broadband. Look, all that stuff sounds great. But at the end of the day, the responsibility is on us to protect the pocketbooks of the ratepayers and consumers. I have no problem with utilities being profitable. What I want to do is make sure that you know that if you want a fearless voice that will stand up the utility companies, let them know when they're right, but correct them when they're wrong. And vote for Daniel Blackman on November 3rd. And the last thing I'll say is we cannot afford to lose the situation or a community that is in a low or moderate income space. We have to make the investments in the decisions to correct the right, the wrongs that have been made that have increased those rates on many families. Thank you so much for the time. Thank you. Bubba McDonald, it is now your turn. Well, thank you very much. And uh, I certainly appreciate the people of Georgia that have voted me the honor and opportunity to serve on the Georgia Public Service Commission. I look at the track record that we have. And when you look at industry that looks at Georgia, They'll have a scout that will come in and they will look at the, what the infrastructures of the state might be, whether they want to locate uh, a new, new industry to bring jobs. One of the first three questions they're going to ask is, what is my energy cost and what is the reliability of it? And Georgia shines there. We're over 16 percent below national average. Utility bills. Uh, we are uh, on the on the cutting edge. The first two nuclear uh, plants in the nation in over 36 years, and the people of Georgia need this independent, strong, conservative voice 
to stay on the Georgia Public Service Commission. My record shows that. I've been at it before. I'm with the people of Georgia anytime asked. And Nathan, we would love to have you come and bring your uh, views to an integrated resource plan meeting as we look at the future. I appreciate the people of Georgia and I ask for your vote again. Thank you. Thank you. And Nathan Wilson, you get the final closing statement. Thank you for having me. Uh, so low rates doesn't mean people are paying low bills in the state of Georgia. When you have peak rates, then those bills go up. When you have the hot summers, those bills go up and that affects poor people immensely. And so we need to look at ways to offset those costs by having more solar, more renewable energy during those peak times. But the number one thing we need to put in place with that is having the way to store that energy. And our grid currently in the state of Georgia has no way to store that temporary energy so we can carry on and lower the overall cost for those peak rates. And that's what I want to see long-term, lower peak rates across the board so Georgians will pay less for energy in the state of Georgia. So that, that is the my, my passion to see these type of solutions because we talk about low rates, but at the end of the day, those bills are still very high because of those hot summer days that we have down here in Georgia. Excellent. Thank you. And that concludes our debate. We would like to remind voters that Election Day is Tuesday, November 3rd. Don't forget to turn in your absentee ballot if you requested one. And early voting in person began yesterday and will run through October 30th. Thanks to the candidates and to the panel for participating in the debate. I would also like to thank the Atlanta Press Club and Georgia Public Broadcasting for arranging today's debate. For more information on the full schedule of debates, please visit atlantapressclub.org. This debate will be available for viewers to watch on demand on Atlanta Press Club's Facebook page and on Georgia Public Broadcasting's website, gpb.org. I'm Christy Swartz. Thank you for joining us for the Atlanta Press Club Loudermilk Young Debate Series. Thank you.